Okay, 7.30. <coughs> we have a review of modifications to rules and regulations for comprehensive stormwater and management bylaw. Go so, ahead, Val. Thank you. What you have before you is, um, is a change to bring the stormwater regulations uh, more into sync with what we actually practice. Um, right now, there's a requirement that the board has to take action within 21 days of receipt of an application unless an extension is granted. Um, this is for stormwater management permits that you see with site plan applications, um, subdivision applications. Those applications have a different timeline. We have much more time to review those and the stormwater goes along with whatever's being proposed for site plan or subdivision. So what we're proposing is when a stormwater management permit application is submitted in conjunction with another application like site plan or, or subdivision. <clears throat> the deadline for the stormwater plan uh, would coincide with the action deadline of the other primary application. So we wouldn't have to get an, an extension from the applicant when they're submitting the application. <laughs> um, it would follow the same timeline as the site plan review. If the stormwater permit application is submitted separately, it doesn't have another, um, uh, I guess, a corresponding application. So it's just stormwater. It doesn't have site plan. It doesn't have subdivision. Then the 21 days would still apply. Okay. So it's just kind of putting things, the timelines or deadlines, in line with what happens. to advertise them for the stormwater too, right? So we would bring it over to. Yeah, the, so part of it is that with the 21 days, we don't even meet within 21 days of our deadlines. So right away, you're, we're needing to get an extension from <coughs> the applicant. And we have the stormwater um, piece of it is advertised with the site plan piece and with the subdivision piece together. Um, so it's all on the same you know, right. timeline as far as process goes. So it's really um, skipping that step of having to get an extension when they're filing their application. And then there is another piece of this that we're correcting while we're kind of opening it up. Section 13, when we revised the regulations previously. We forgot to renumber that section, so it still had 14 instead of 13 in the subsections. So that's really just an administrative number change, <coughs> renumbering. Quick question on the storm management, water management permit application that's submitted without another application. Mm -hmm. Is this administrative? Then one so that the 21 days they don't you don't have to separately advertise that one. Correct. Okay. All right. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. That seems fine to me. Seems good. I don't know if anyone's here to talk about that one. I doubt it. something in the back? What do you want to do? You want to see if there's any comments on it, though? No. Minutes. You guys want to do minutes? Sean, designated minute reader. <coughs> do, you want, do you want to do a formal vote? Do we need a formal vote? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Take a vote to approve the change to zoning bylaw for the stormwater management as drafted. So moved. Second. All in favor. Thank you. <coughs> All right. We got a few minutes. And
Take a look at the meeting minutes from August 7th and from September 11th. Minutes, and any questions? Nope. nope. <coughs> Take a motion to accept the minutes of August 7th. So moved. Second. Okay. Good. How about September 11th? No motion. Motion to be Accept the minutes as drafted for uh, September 11th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Abstain. You are absent that day, huh? Mm hmm. I'll let you look. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we have a 740 continued public hearing. Site Plan Review 18-12, 911 Main Street. Dear Mr. Sorrentino, relative to the above reference project, this letter serves to memorialize the applicant's request to continue the public hearing to the board's November meeting. Accordingly, please extend the action <coughs> deadline for Site Plan Review 18-12 and Stormwater Management Permit 18-11 to November 20th, 2018. Thank you in advance for your time and consideration. Michael Newhouse. Take a motion to extend to. What do you want to do? 745? Yeah, yeah. To November 13th at 745. So moved. Second. All in favor. Good. Take that back. I just want to point out that these meeting minutes, this meeting is being recorded for meeting minutes purposes only just so everybody knows and I think what we'll do right now is we'll jump to a decision for a site plan review 18-11 stormwater management permit 18-10 900 Salem Street map by one parcel 28 and Benito con concrete <coughs> Chairman Attorney Robert Peterson for the applicant of uh, Beneventum Concrete. Uh, I am in receipt of the proposed uh, site plan decision and the stormwater management permit, and we have no objection to any of the conditions. We would ask, however, for a modification of condition number 20, which requires that the admix be uh, kept in a sealed container and can contained within the plant itself. The admix is uh, and will be. I have pictures you can pass this out with me. <clears throat> the admix is actually kept in a sealed sea container. 
uh, which is stacked and it's connected uh, with a sealed hose uh, from the container to the. Um, so it's 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 not within the confines <coughs> of the building. Correct. It is sealed. You can leave, if you want to leave the air conditioner in the air sealed. That's fine. It's just not physically connected to the plant. So. <coughs> Yep, we'll just remove within the confines of the building. And other than that, we have no comments on either proposed decision. So, Board, have any comments on those? <coughs> Everybody good? There were three just minor outstanding engineering comments about the stormwater, and those were drafted as conditions 8, 9, and 10 prior to endorsement of the plan. Um, we worked with Paul to draft those conditions, and he was happy with requiring that before signing the plan. Okay. Take a motion to accept the conditions as amended. So moved. Second. Favor. Well said. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we have 745, public hearing 81G, application 18-02 for 1 Hudson Street. Map 70, parcel 82A. <coughs> Robert Marini uh, for Richard Rapaki, applicant 81G. Actually, my name is Patrick Grant. Robert Marini is our engineer and principal. Um, I'm representing Native Tech, and our client is Richard Rapaki, as you said, 1 Hudson Street. He plans to extend his driveway in these red shaded areas. We've updated the plan to address your comments. <clears throat> you gave us two comments, one to, one to change the thickness. Hold on one second. And change it in the detail, which we did, and the other one was to give it a radius um, on the north side. Oh, have these copies, the original survey. So maybe I could give a little background for the board. So um, Jordan Street is off of Salem Street um, to the south of Salem Street. And it dead ends um, into kind of Hudson Street, which is a paper street. Um, at the dead end, um, number one, Hudson has a driveway that comes off the end of it. And right now, they sort of have a paved um, half circle uh, for their driveway. The, um, there is a portion that kind of fills out the full circle that's gravel, and that piece is within the paper street. So yeah, it's- Right here. So what the homeowner is proposing is to pave that portion of the paper street to kind of round out the circle. Um, it also creates a, a bit of a, um, almost like a, a hammerhead type turnaround or a, um, a three point turnaround for the end of the street. 
Um, there were some comments um, from the from the town engineer um, about a couple issues, including the kind of rounding out that that pavement at the end of the street into the new proposed pavement, and also reminding that it's a paper street; you can't use it for parking. It shouldn't be blocked. Um, and I'm not sure if there was something else as well. He had two minor comments. He said pavement should be laid in two courses. The first course shall be two and a half inches thick binder. The second shall be one and a half inch thick wearing surface. The details shown on sheet two should be revised accordingly. Yeah, change here one and a half inch, two and a half inch. <coughs> Paved radius should be provided the north side of the intersection of Jordan Street and Hudson Street. Plan sheet two should be revised accordingly. And here's the radius that we that we added before it went straight into the road. Here's the pavement that he's adding so he can park. Here's just the turnaround. And you see Hudson Street. There's no loss here. It's actually all grass right now here. Yeah. So it's an existing house. It's a little bit different than we ever see with an 81G plan because usually they're extending a roadway to build a house. This is a house that's already there. Um, and what they're doing is adding some pavement at the end of the street within the paper street right of way to you know create a little bit of better turnaround for the homeowner and in general i think for feedback we got from dpw is it'll be a better situation when trash um, and other trucks are going down there to turn around um, so it is an improvement it's um it's they weren't going to hold it to typical standards because it's an existing house um, so it's not like they're paving new frontage for it um, so it was looked at as an improvement overall um, paul has not seen these plans so he'll want to review this uh, with the changes that that are shown yeah he said that you know, those two are kind of minor he wouldn't have them as conditions so. the board have any questions the plans are kind of tough to read. Yeah, it was sent to conservation initially, so you have all these uh, setbacks, riverfront, and BBW line, BBW setbacks, um, new added swell. A lot of it is for conservation. <coughs> the only thing to really look at is this red hatch pattern and the existing drive here. Those are the changes. Uh, are there to. enough dimensions in the red that they can construct it? You know, I, I can't really see widths and um I mean, yeah, it doesn't I mean, look the like engineer did, so it doesn't look like there's a radius on that yeah no we can we can add that to the plan if necessary i'm sure i mean i didn't design it so i'm not sure what the radius is the engineer did it earlier so paul didn't seem to have an issue but you can coordinate that is anybody here for this one okay Yeah, you may have to spruce it up a little bit, but I think we're okay. We can take care of it within the... You want to close the hearing? Yeah. Get a decision next time? Yeah. <coughs> yeah we probably want to have a radius on that that the, that the guys are comfortable with. Like, some trucks. Because I'm not... What's that? I'm sorry? I said we probably ought to have a radius on that because I'm not... Yeah. Yeah, well, visualizing how that is actually going to turn around. Other than just back up like it always did. Okay. Would that be part of an order of conditions, or would that be a continuance of the yeah, we'll, hearing? Yeah, we'll close and you can okay, I appreciate it. Only because Paul didn't really have any issues. So. so what we can do is, if they close the hearing tonight, mm -hmm. uh, we can prepare a draft decision for the board to consider at the next meeting. Okay. So you're going to have to ask for the continuance. So since you're the rep, you'll have to sign this and submit this. So it's OK. We won't. Uh, yeah. And if you could submit um, copies of this tomorrow to our office. Sure. That would be great. We have a, we're attending the conservation meeting tomorrow. Is that okay to come then, or do you want it earlier? Um, no, that's fine. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll take a motion to close the public hearing and to extend the action deadline to November 30th, 2018. So moved. Second. Yeah, good. Thank you. Only because it was existing. So we have a request to release lots for Garden of Eden, defendant of subdivision. 16-01, map two parcels, 201 through 206, 223, 225. Dear Ms. Gindrich, I respectfully request the Wilmington Planning Board to vote to authorize the planning director to release lots 11 through 26 for Garden of Eden subdivision. The binder course has been installed. Are we all set for uh, surety? Surety. Yes. yes. He posted the surety in the full amount when we released the lots one through ten. So we don't have any. Paul didn't. Paul didn't give us anything, so we're good. No, we're good. And I did check; they have septics approved for all of the lots. So those are the two conditions, or three conditions: binder course on the roadway, surety posted, and septic systems approved. Are those the right lots, 11 through 26? Yes. And then there's map three parcels, two of seven through 22. Yeah, I know, it's a little confusing. Well, those were the original parcels um, of the project. Mm -hmm. So, so now mean, they're... Does that mean one through 10 have been built? Almost. Yeah. Yeah, almost. Yeah, they're they're they've built as a lot of them. Yeah. <coughs> to get her special book for you to sign. <laughs> okay, I take a motion to release uh, lots 11 through 26 for the guy in the meeting. Second. confusing because I thought they were independent. Right? Mm -hmm. Because um, this guy owns the one on Route 1. He still owns the one on Route 1. He sold this. He sold bars to someone else. So, I don't know.
I appreciate you guys signing in as you come in. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, we have an 8 o'clock, continue public hearing, A1G application, Sherwood Road. Dear Mr. Sarantino, I respectfully request to extend the deadline for action to November 30th, 2018 and continue <coughs> the public hearing for the above reference project to the November hearing. Take a motion to, to extend the public hearing to 8 o'clock on November 13th. So moved. Second. And action deadline to the end of November 30th. So moved. moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Good. My fault, sorry. So that gives us to 8.15, all right, so. Any old business? Any Board of Appeals? Wait, board of Appeals? You want to do Board of Appeals? Yeah, we can do Or do you want to do the waiver? Do the Board of Appeals. Okay. Well, was the guy here for the waiver? No, but I don't know if he's coming or not. I thought we'll he was. Wasn't we'll Arthur going to come? Um, yeah, but maybe I'm just Sorry, do the Board of Appeals. Then. Okay. Two Board of Appeals this month in your packet. Uh, one is for 220 Main Street. Uh, which is before you for the proposed car wash. Um, they have two Board of Appeals applications in, one you saw before for the use. Um, this one is for Groundwater Protection District. Um, groundwater Protection District only allows for up to 15% impervious cover on the site, and they are proposing um, a much greater percent. Remind me what percent they have proposed. I'm sorry, this is my That's okay. memo is incorrect. I think it's something like 70 something percent. I'll get it right here. You have two of 11? Okay, so we gave you two copies of the same thing, and that's what I have, too. Um, yes, I see that. Well, that's why we were confused about the percentage, because it wasn't shown. So they're proposing a much greater percentage cover than 15%, but they did not indicate what percentage that would be. So because this is before you with site plan review, um, typically the, the action is to um, table it until you have site plan review in a place where you can either recommend um, approval or not. <coughs> and um, in this case, because it's in groundwater, um, you know, additional impervious is not desired, so as much open space as possible. So if yeah. you want to put that one off until you... Yeah, we should put that off anyway. It's going to get extended. Paul wasn't too happy with him, so... Okay. Fair enough. There's lots of questions still. The second application is for 11 Commonwealth Avenue. It's the end of Commonwealth Ave, which is off of Lowell Street. Um, right now, there's a barn structure on the parcel. Um, it's sort of an accessory use to the parcel across the paper street. 
Um, there's a residence across the, the street. Um, Commonwealth Ave is not constructed in that location, so I expect that they would be coming before you with an 81G proposal to build out that roadway. But for now, they're proposing to take down the existing barn structure and construct a house. Um, the house would not meet the current setbacks, um, so they're asking for a variance to construct the house and uh, within the front yard setback. No hutch. They haven't, so there was, they, at first they thought that this would be a special permit to the Board of Appeals, and then it was decided that it would actually be a variance <coughs> request. So they have not yet provided a reason for the hardship. Um, they haven't expressed that in their application. No hardship, no approval. Yeah, it's kind of important it's stuff. <laughs> it's like the main it's kind topic. of a rule, right? The lot is not conforming to begin with. It's supposed to be 20,000 square feet. Yeah. So it's 14. It's supposed to be 40 foot. How big a house does it say? That's yeah, really big. It's 52, 52 by, 26. by 26. That's a pretty good size house. Two floors. Three. Two and a half. It's almost two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. That's almost a full floor. Yeah, they have a full shed door around the back. That's twenty-five to three thousand square feet. That's pretty big house. So the the lot itself <coughs> is an existing lot. It does have a strange dimension to it. Um, it has an angle. It is an angle. Yeah, it's. All of those <coughs> lots along Commonwealth Ave ha have those types of angles. Um, I don't know the history of how they were laid out that way, but. Um, well, I think we should recommend the disapproval. We don't, there's no hardships been provided and house seems too big for a lot. Yeah, I agree with that. There's a number of things they could there's do no, differently. The on, right? They're gonna knock down, they're gonna conform. So well, I say the side I'll come close to it anyway. It's only the front yard setback that isn't right. And the front is just right. It exceeds it by quite a bit, actually. That's kind of what's well, on. Okay. You good? Yeah, great. You good? Okay. Yeah. So, no hardship. Is demonstrated, so we don't recommend approval. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can do the 65 industrial way. Okay. <coughs> I was hoping that uh, applicant would be here, That's but confusing. it's not confusing, and I think you guys are going to actually have a little bit more history on this than than I do. Um, and you probably recognize it. So 65 industrial, maybe I can use your plan and lay it out. So um, Arthur Cannabis is the applicant, owner of the building. He's looking to turn one of the loading docks, um, change the scissors lift into a drive-in door and this is the plan that was, oh, sorry. This is the plan that was submitted. So industrial way up here, um, this is 93, progress way on that side. Um, the building, building stays the same. <coughs> this area right here would turn into a drive-in door and um, this right here would be a proposed forklift door. So not big changes to the building. We had him um, show that he meets the parking requirements for the uses that are in the building. Um, he, we asked for the open space calculation, but that was not provided. Um, we followed up asking for that information. Um, the issue with this is that the site is not striped for parking at all. And it is. So this, 
configuration isn't exactly what was approved previously um, when we went back into the files. It's close, especially over here, um, but the area along Progress Way is a bit different than what was approved before. So it's, it's really a new striping layout that um, when we passed it over to the town engineer, he had some comments and wanted to, to see a, a laid out plan. Yeah, he says, yeah. <clears throat> the plot plan we see shows an extensive parking lot, striping plants stamped and sealed by a registered land surveyor. The proposed striping plan shows potential vehicle conflicts circulation issues and overall undesirable conditions. The engineering division requests the applicant retain a professional engineer to revise the parking space layout and prepare a striping plan using standard engineering practice and conforming to the town zoning bylaws. We reserve comment until a plan stamped and sealed by professional engineers receive for mm -hmm. review. I kind of agree. How do we know really that he meets the parking requirements if we didn't get a proper plan that's properly striped? Is, it, is there one existing door that he's just going to change and then he's putting in a new door, a new garage? Yeah, so it's an overhead door now, and he wants to widen it a little bit and make it a drive-through door. Right. So is he taking away a couple of parking spaces? No, because it's currently a door. Like, it's, it's no, currently well, an overhead. If he's widening it, though, you said, right? So if he's widening it. He says not, um, because, <laughs> they, because this striping plan is sort of built around what they're proposing as well. So they just avoided this area. I uh, was striping. Well, what do we have on file previously? You have a plan that shows this area. It, it's generally the same striping that was proposed before, except for the area along Progress Way. And that's where you see a bunch of potential conflicts. This corner's really tight right here. Does he exceed the parking spaces? Yeah, he has enough parking spaces for uh, the uses that are in there. Does yes. he exceed it? Yeah. Yes. So they could so take could some eliminate some. Mm -hmm. But I guess what we felt that he should probably submit this for review instead of asking for a waiver. Yeah. 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 And he should work with Paul about which ones he wants to eliminate. <laughs> <coughs> if he doesn't need all the spaces, then take some away. Right, and, and that'll add to the open space, which we haven't gotten that calculation yet. So we should deny his waiver. Unfortunately, yeah. Right. Okay, so take a motion to deny his waiver as discussed. So move. Second. We have a few minutes, and before we start, I'll uh, talk a little bit. Everybody signed in. I saw most of you do that. That's good. Thank you. When you have a chance to speak, you're going to state your name and your address. We're going to uh, try not to be too repetitive. And you always address the board to the chairman, okay? Other than that, how's things? <laughs> if you guys could speak up a little, it's difficult to hear you. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you.
guess we'll go by that clock. That's why I just play it clock slow. So it's automatic, yeah. You get something when you're automatically out. <coughs> Okay, <coughs> we have a continued public hearing, definitive subdivision 18-02, site plan review. Stormwater management plan, 362 Middlesex Ave. Mr. Osgood. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, ben Osgood, Ranger Engineering and Design. Here, representing Bettering LLC, again for 362 Middlesex Ave. Um, we've made a lot of progress with this plan. So I just want to go through some of the changes that we've made to address the comments from the board, the engineering department, the butters. Uh, I'm going to start with the overall site plan. Just like this is the layout materials plan that's in the package. The roadway is still a short cul-de-sac, 32 feet of pavement. Um, we have changed the flat pavement surface to one with a uh, center island. One comment that the fire department made is they wanted to have a mountable curb along that center island with a little bit of a hard area that they could possibly use if things got tight. The uh, layout of the building, um, I think the size is the same as the last time we've here. We've adjusted the patio. Um, the patio is now on the end of the building before it was out in the back. Uh, and, and at the request of the Board of Health and the abutters, we moved it around to the end of the building. We've added a second patio um, that um, is contemplated. Uh, figured we'd add it. It may not be constructed, but it, uh, a second patio for use of the uh, people that are here at the um, site. The offset to the back property line from the parking lot has been <coughs> increased to 20 feet. We have the segmental block wall along the back, and we have an eight-foot um, stockade fence that will be starting here, <coughs> coming around the property, uh, shielding between the residential properties. We have the landscape barrier. We've shown snow storage. Um, because we moved the patio, we changed the parking layout over on the north side of the building. We now moved the handicap spaces across the parking lot. This is a flat area here. Um, that's where the patio is now, is where the landscape spaces were previously. Um, dumpster pad is shown. It's away from the residential properties. Um, and I think that's pretty much it with the layout materials plan. Oh, I'm sorry, we did, we also showed site lighting. And I'll go over it a little bit uh, later with some other um, exhibits but we have just some overhead parking lights just the standard parking lot lights we have five and then we have wall pack units which are actually downcast units that are mounted on an arm that shine down the same way a parking light would so it's not your typical shine out wall packs they shine down as far as the grading and drainage is concerned We've addressed the um, slope of the roadway. It's now a consistent 3.5% slope, which meets the bylaw. We've taken out the um, steeper area up at the top. We did have a, a dip in the bottom. Uh, and talking with the uh, town engineer, we just agreed that a straight 3.5% slope up will be fine. We've graded it around. One concern was having a steep circle. We now have a uh, we've taken the grading with a crown around the circle. We super elevate the back and then come around. It makes it easier for vehicles to negotiate. Um, the stormwater system, we now have one buried detention system and one buried infiltration slash detention slash treatment system. We've changed some of the drainage around. We collect some over here now send it into the infiltrators in the front of the building. It allows us to bring the roof drains down into that drain as well. Um, so we've gone from having two infiltration areas to just one 
We still have an open pond here. The latest revision just has it as a very shallow. It's only six inches deep. It works more like a wet swale. Going to add some treatment. And we have tree box filters. There's four tree box filters. So they're basically, it's a catch basin with a tree filter. There's a meteor in there, a drain at the bottom. Water comes into the catch basin, overflows into the tree filter, provides the stormwater treatment, and then it drains out the bottom into the pond and then the stormwater system. Um, we've gone through a few iterations of the drainage with um, the town engineer. We still are not 100%, but we're about 95%. Uh, we've actually already made corrections and brought them to him, uh, but obviously, um, I brought him down yesterday. He hasn't had a chance to uh, review them. So. Moving on, the um, one item we needed was a turning radius plan. So we've taken the largest fire truck that uh, you can, ladder truck that you can buy. It's a single, single unit truck. You know, one set of front wheels, two sets of uh, dual back wheels, uh, with the longest. Um, I guess uh, distance between the back and the front wheels which has the widest turning radius so we've shown that and you can see it fits within the cul-de-sac we've designed comfortably with room on each side we've done that also for the fire truck going around the building and so it, it can maneuver in here there's plenty of room the uh, dashed line you see that's actually the front bumper so the front bumper will go right over the curb, but that's pretty standard. Uh, the wheels stay within the parking lot and, and it negotiates, negotiates out through the site. Um, so those, those were submitted a couple weeks ago. I don't know that the fire department has commented yet. We have a photometric plan. So this plan, it's looks like a bunch of numbers, but basically this shows the light intensities at ground level with our current lighting. So this was done actually by the lighting manufacturer and they've designed it so that basically we have zero light at the property lines that abut the residential properties. We have zero light going off property over here. There's one spot that's a point one, but that's the railroad track. It's really not going to have any effect on anybody. Um, so this essentially shows that the lighting stays on our site, shows how we provide enough lighting in the parking lot. You want to have two or a point two or point three as a minimum. You know, we, there's a couple little dark spots that might be point one, but generally we have plenty of lighting uh, for the type of facility, just the parking facility. Just another fancy view they provided us. So this kind of in a shaded relief. Um, so you can, it's not numbers, it's more of a depiction. And the, the black areas are where the really low lighting is. These bright areas are pretty much directly under the lights that show it, you know, the intensity is a little higher. So as you can see, you know, we've lit up our parking lot pretty well. We don't go off property at all with any of the light. We light up the, uh, the roadway. This portion of the roadway, would, the street lights that are along Middlesex Ave would light it up. And the last item I have, we submitted revised floor plans. They, um, they didn't change that much, but we did redo some of the rooms to accommodate this patio here. Because we moved the patio, we had to uh, kind of create a hallway system to get out to the main patio mm -hmm. on the north of the building. Um, otherwise, it stayed pretty much the same. And the rendering has been revised a little bit essentially the same rendering some of the doorways changed in the back there's one less doorway there's <coughs> another one on the left on the uh, right side uh, to access the patio so and it's a quick overview i think you know the items that are left are in a letter yeah and you can see a lot of them are very minor i think what we're going to do is uh since there's quite a few in the list some of them you answered i think maybe since I love to read, I'll read them, and yes. you could kind of answer them as we go through. Sure. Maybe a few of these. 
And these are comments from um, Paul Looney, the town engineer. The applicant's engineer, as we designed the roadway grading to provide a maximum grade of less than 4% for the entire length of roadway. As such, the waiver requested on sheet one is no longer applicable. The roadway profile on sheet seven should label the proposed roadway centerline slope. Also, it appears that the 86 contour elevation at roadway station zero plus zero five can be slightly shifted closer to the right of way six feet plus or minus to provide a smoother transition to Middlesex Ave. So I took a look at that. I actually talked to Paul in his office about it and we were looking at a topo topographic line on the existing conditions plan. It actually is at the top of curb. So at the roadway sideline when we take out the curb, we're gonna need to have the profile right where we designed it. And I've indicated that in my letter to him. In accordance with the subdivision regulation section 5 construction requirements, non-residential street pavement thickness shall be 6 inches in depth, laid in three courses of 2.5 inches, 2 inches, and 1.5 and inch of top coat. The applicant is proposing 4 inch total thickness, 2.5 inch binder plus 1.5 top. A waiver is required and has been requested on sheet 1. The Department of Public Works has no objection to this waiver request. The Department of Public Works reiterates a previous comment that the proposed roadway remain private. In accordance with the subdivision regulation section 5 construction requirements, the minimum pavement width and right of way width should be a minimum of 42 feet and 60 feet, respectively. The plans illustrate a pavement width and right of way width of 32 feet and 50 feet, respectively. Considering a low volume of traffic projected, the Department of Public Works has no objection to this waiver request. The Department of Public Works reiterates a previous comment that the proposed roadway remain private. The photometric lighting plan indicates excess light spillover to the southwesterly property corner. The site lighting design should be revised to eliminate any excess spillover to adjoining properties. Is that the point one? Right, we've submitted a, a new plan since that was written, so this, the new plan that I showed you does not spill over any light onto adjoining properties. Okay. The traffic study for the project has been reviewed by engineering division. The projected low traffic volumes do not appear to have any adverse impact on the surrounding roadway network level of service. As such, we have no comment on the study. The revised plan set illustrates two lot subdivision. The proposed roadway layout and property line plan shall show the following to demonstrate compliance with the town's dimensional requirements for the general business zoning district. Lot width, lot width circle shown in the plan appears to be less than the minimum required for the zoning district. We corrected that. We had plenty of room. We just, the circle scale was off a little bit. So that's been correct. A vehicle maneuvering exhibit must be provided demonstrating circulation of the Wilmington Fire Department fire truck around the building and cul-de-sac. Done that? Yes. All proposed spot grades sh should be reviewed and, if necessary, revised to the applicant's engineers based on the latest version of the grading plan. Low points without any drain inlet were identified in the following locations. North Eastly corner of the rear parking lot, North Eastly corner of the dumpster pad. We've added additional spot grades to clarify that those are not low spots, they're actually high, you know, adjusted the grading so that it drains properly. The proposed dumpster pad should be shown on sheet six, grading drainage and utility plan. That's been added. Stormwater management comment. A pretreatment device must be implemented into the treatment train downstream of trench drain. The device must be shown on sheet 6 and sheet 7 in a detail provided on the appropriate detail sheet. Size and calculations must also be provided in the stormwater report to demonstrate the device selected is capable of removing at least 25% total suspended solids prior to discharge to the subsurface infiltration <coughs> basin. Right, so he's talking right here, there's a trench drain, and we've added a deep sump 
manhole basically would function as a deep sump catch basin, um, which has a 25% TSS removal. The run elevation for catch basin one should be reviewed and adjusted to properly collect runoff from the reported subcatchment area. We just adjusted that. Drain structure CB2 conflicts with the drain structure drain manhole two. The plan should be revised and resubmitted. We adjusted, they were just showing a little bit too close together so we spread them apart. Additional spot grade should be added in the vicinity of catch basin two to ensure the drain inlet will collect the runoff from the reported subcatchment area. We've added spot grades. Additional spot grade should be added above pond three to demonstrate adequate cover over the system. So we've added spot grades for that. The subcatchment area for CB2 is incorrect. Subcatchment boundary should be perpendicular to the proposed contour lines. The proposed grading within the parking lot should be revised or the catchment area adjusted in the hydrological computations. That's been adjusted. As was requested by the engineering division, additional soil testing was performed by the applicant's engineer in the proposed open detention basin footprint. Results indicate the estimated season, seasonal high groundwater elevation in this area is approximately 85.40. The detention basin outlet structure four inch orifice is at an elevation of 85. The lowest orifice should be raised above estimated seasonal high groundwater. We reiterate our comment that the applicant's engineer should evaluate different best management practices listed in the stormwater policy that may be better suited for this application. For example, a water quality wet swale designed to intercept seasonal high groundwater could be evaluated to provide peak attenuation and additional water quality for runoff discharging from the site. So we have raised the outlet. We have one outlet that's 85.5, so that pond will act as a large wet swale um, that will provide additional treatment. And when the groundwater is low, it will provide infiltration. Um, we have not, in our calculations, taken any credit for that. So we still meet all of the treatment and infiltration with the original stormwater system. So that would give us a a little bit more treatment, a little bit more infiltration, but we just haven't taken any credit for it. Inspection port locations for the underground infiltration system should be clearly marked and labeled on the grading, drainage, and utility plan, sheet six. The riser, frame, and cover shall be specified in a detail sheet for both underground systems. Yeah, so we had a note, risers typical, so we've shown all the risers now. The applicant's engineer is proposing three box filters to treat stormwater runoff from proposed impervious subsurfaces. Subsurf excuse me. A detail has been provided, however, the revised documents do not include all the information previously requested for the three box filter, and as such, the engineering division could not review the adequacy of the proposed BMP. The following shall be addressed by the applicant's engineer. Sizing calculations and basis of design to demonstrate the proposed water quality volume is met. Tree type should be specified. A detail showing how the outlet pipe is connected to the tree box filter. The applicant's engineer must provide more detail on the proposed <coughs> underdrain, i.e. the invert for each structure in detail illustrating the underdrain <coughs> connection to the closed drainage system. Additional test pits may be necessary to confirm each three tree box filter under drain will not intercept seasonal high groundwater. So these tree box filters are a package filter that you buy from a manufacturer. They're called Storm Treat. They're out of Connecticut. Um, it's a manufactured, we have some standard details. Uh, we provided additional information. We provided information about the testing and the treatment and how they size the system. Um, I probably still will need to talk to the engineer about it, um, but we have provided additional details. As far as the groundwater is concerned, um, if a tree box filter is, with, is in the high groundwater, basically we can set it on a slab. So what he's concerned with is these are open bottom. They just sit on a stone bed. Um, so if groundwater is higher than the bottom, that it will pull groundwater out and drain it. So if we set it on a slab, it won't pull the groundwater out. 
it will just allow the water to be infiltrated. So we've made that change. Um, I still may need to talk about a few details with uh, Paul Aloni, but uh, we provided most of what he needs. Okay, the summary of peak discharge rates table for DP number two, post development in section nine. <coughs> of the stormwater report should be reviewed and reconciled with the hydrological computations. We've done that. We've made some additional changes to rates and run runoff rates and they're all updated in the most recent report. The stage storage elevation reported in the <coughs> narrative of section 10, standard three of the stormwater report should be revised to read 92.60. Also, <coughs> this section of the narrative refers to two infiltration structures where only one is proposed. That's been changed. Utility comments, the proposed water main and its appurtenance must be shown on sheet six, grading, drainage, and utility plan. Right, that's shown, that's the sheet here, so that's been shown on the sheet as well as the utility plan. <laughs> yeah, some other general comments that don't require uh, a response. Considering this roadway will serve as one non-residential building, the Department of Public Works requests that the roadway remain private and the owner be responsible for future maintenance, repair, snow ice removal for this roadway and drainage system. The applicant or designated authority shall schedule a pre-construction meeting with the engineering division to review construction schedule, permitted driveways, and any permit conditions at least two weeks prior to commencement of the earth disturbing activities. Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan and compliance <coughs> with the EPA's Construction General Permit shall be provided to the Engineering Division and Planning Conservation Department at the pre-construction meeting. The applicant and designated authority shall give reasonable notice to the Engineering Division for inspection prior to installing any utility roadway sub-base pavement, proposed stormwater management system or other critical design components. And standard, the applicant shall provide as built plans when complete. Okay. Just got Board of Health has approved the septic system. Does the board have any questions? Could you talk a little bit about the elevations? I mean, I, is that a um, brick or is it, uh, what is the treatment? <clears throat> I believe it is a brick um, standing seam metal roof. It's a masonry structure. Masonry? So it's not brick, it's. Brick is brick. Yeah. It's brick? It's brick. Brick yep. face? Yeah, brick face. Yeah, it's not block, it's right. bricks. Yeah. Um, and then aluminum frame windows, painted aluminum frames. The lighting design was done by the manufacturer? Correct. I mean, it would be good if you could have um, a stamp on it or, I mean, a manufacturer wants to come out with a certain result. I mean, it would be nice to have at least a stamp or another engineer look at it. Being reviewed by your town engineer. Um, right, so yeah. I don't know if... The lighting manufacturers usually are the most knowledgeable about their their products um, and what they do and how they work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, would just I can be, inquire and see if they have someone who can stamp it. But opinion on that with the residences being so close, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to we want to make sure that there's no spill over there. Um, so the waivers, can you go through the waivers again? There's two waivers, so the roadway width. We have 32 feet of pavement, a 60 foot, uh, it was a 50 foot roadway width. Yes. Right, the, there is some contradiction in the subdivision control bylaw that lists that it should be, it lists, it's, lists those dimensions in one area, it lists greater dimensions in another area. Um, so we've asked to stick to the uh, layout dimensions which are in the in the in the um, roadway configuration section of the bylaw, the other dimensions are in the construction section. So we've asked to to meet those roadway configuration um, dimensions. 
which are more than adequate for, as you can see, the fire truck you know, fits around that roadway with ease. Well, it looked the seemed pretty vehicle. tight to me going around the building. Well, going around the building has nothing to do with that. The front? With, with the front, with that right. you know, request for a waiver. That's a, that's a separate, yeah. and we meet, the, we meet all the regulations for aisle widths and, um, and that sort of you know, parking lot dimensions under the bylaw. And the second waiver is the pavement depth? Is the pavement depth. Um, six inch pavement depth is just way too much for a roadway that will have this type of um, use. It's, it's, that's more of an industrial area. You know, if you're out on Valleville Road, you have trucks coming in and out. That's more appropriate for those areas, but we have a very low truck count, um, small trucks as well. I mean, one of the concerns I have is you know, if, if one day, who knows what happens 10, 15 years from now, if, if you know, this, 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 per, this tenant is not in the building anymore, this is kind of a unique building and, um, you know, kind of a white elephant, if you will. And, and if we have, um, you know, approved waivers, it might be even tougher to get somebody else in there. I mean, ideally, if, you know, if you'd like to have the driveway a public way one day, it might be tougher to get that done if the pavement doesn't meet our standards or the width doesn't. Um, I don't know, that's just one concern I was, I had. I mean, it does happen where, you know, someday they might not, this, this they might be looking, for not, might be an empty building, they might be looking to get somebody else in there. Just a thought. Okay, anybody else? Can, can you flip to the, Plan again the floor plan. Floor plan. Yeah. I don't think we had this provided in a packet, so I just wanted to pick up real quick. Right. This didn't come in until <coughs> Monday. So it's basically the same. We shifted here to add an access way out to this patio, and then right here there was a. Um, access to a patio here so we've moved that over there i think they eliminated a, one of the offices to provide access there Confident you square away with the town engineer and the stormwater before the next meeting? Before the next meeting, we'll be done. Well before the next meeting? Well before. <laughs> I've asked okay. That, I've asked wait that a second, wait a second. Give you a chance. What's that? I've asked that he meet with me this week. I have to call tomorrow and set an appointment. So. Okay. Anybody outside that's for this one? You can kind of come in. Everybody can kind of move down if you want. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead. I'll let you ask a question. State your name and your address. 15 Prendergast, 7 Prendergast Road. Director Butter, could you just walk us through since we, don't, we can't see from here? Can you give us just a general layout of what right. each of this is? He can do that. Just say your name slowly. She needs to type it. So. Thank 15 you. Prendergast. I'm an engineer. I deal with the outside of the buildings. The interior is not my specialty, but um, so essentially here's the front entrance here. There is a large group slash community room. Um, there's admissions offices, staff and visitor rooms. The, I think the resident rooms are kind of along <coughs> the outside of the building. There's a corridor with showers, bathrooms. Um, there's some some other offices in this area. There's a TV lounge. There's a cafeteria, kitchen. Some maintenance and receiving sprink sprinkler rooms. Some some offices. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. Uh, Janine Goudreau, uh, Five L Ave. Um, I'm a little concerned about the exits. 
How many actual exits are there for these people? Should something happen for the patients? Should something happen, like say a fire? It's all designed per the building code but with emergency exits. I can count. There's one, two. Uh, I don't know that you count that. So there's three. So there's two and maybe three. Well, there's the front entryway. And then there's a stairwell here with an exit at the bottom, and a stairwell here with an exit at the, at the bottom. And did they agree to put right. that extra fire hydrant in? Because they only had one fire hydrant. In the yes. Front. Yep. So there is one in the back now. There is one in the back. Yep. Sprinklers. How about the quality Sprinkler. of the windows? I'm thinking about the noise um, from the train and from the traffic um, weighing on the people that are patients in there. I mean, I, they'll meet the building code as far as as far as that's concerned. I Quality of construction. We haven't specified the windows at this moment in time. It's a little early in the process to be doing that. Um, what do you, you normally know, do? Well, the glazing contractor. First of all, I don't think. You know, I'm really not that far along, but what we normally do is we get an aluminum frame system that's usually the happening in windows generally because the codes of all they're much more heavy duty and the glass is thicker because of uh, energy and uh, casualty events. So the windows that I've put in recent recently have been a lot of sound attenuation. I haven't spec these out yet, but I don't think noise is going to be an issue whatsoever for the residences. I mean, sure they're going to hear the vibration from the train, but other than that, I can't imagine it's an issue. Okay. Anyone else? else? Are they, yeah, are there now um, doors <coughs> from the bedrooms out into the halls? Because at first there wasn't. At first yeah. there was just doors between the bedrooms and an occasional one out to the hall. So people had to cut through other people's bedrooms in order to leave there. They all have their own room, their own, their own entrance into the hallways. They all, okay, so they've changed that. Anyone else? Just quick, I know it's wrong, but the uh, hey, name and address. The patio is that name and address. Six Pine Road. Thank you. Is that patio? Is that X? Do you patients have access to that patio when they go up in it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now on that side, what? It's actually you? it's actually an enclosed patio, so you can only get to it from the building. And they can get off the patio. So no. Yeah. So is that side of the building have a fence where the train tracks are? Um, we have some screening, some landscape screening, but we did not put a fence up along the tracks. And down where that little pond is, that like, is that? That will have a, that will have a fence around it, a full foot yeah. black chain link fence. Right. Next, good. Um, Jackie Rivera, two Judith Road. Um, will there be another interdepartmental review um, with the update to the roadway as far as, you know, the fire engines going by? Yeah. He's got to resubmit the plans and... Well, we don't have another season. Well, there, there won't be another... Yet. There's no date for that or... Well, he's going to have to submit updated plans and he has to submit an updated stormwater management plan for the next meeting. That'll be within the next week or so. But there won't be an interdepartment. There won't be another. Can I explain that? Yeah, go ahead. So, what we do, we don't have a meeting, but we distribute the plans to the departments <coughs> and get com any comments from them. So, you'll have, a, you'll have another meeting with him in a week or so? Most likely. Whether he comes or not, is, it'll depend on. It'll depend on the quality of the submission and how many questions the engineer has. No, I just mentioned them all. I actually will go sit with the engineer to make sure that we're on the same page and, and I've given him everything he needs. Okay. Next. Yeah, Frank. Hi, good evening. Frank West, Two Birchwood Road. Lifelong resident of the Shady Lane area. Um, I tend to agree with Mr. Shedd. Seems like what he's talking about is, is that if you give it a waiver, and another word for a waiver is variance, mm -hmm. and I believe that a new construction, I, I thought that we were supposed to get variances, and I could be wrong on that. 
But that said, is is that I think that they should be able to meet whatever the roadway specifications are because not only for this building here, but let's say is this setting a precedent for some future building as we, you know, the town's developing, so you know somebody else wanted to do something similar, you know, would they use this as a precedent to to kind of bypass some of the uh, regulations of the planning board? So waivers and variances are <clears throat> entirely two different things. A waiver is uh, granted many times by planning board. Um, you can see he indicated we have an issue with our zoning bylaw, so that'll be something we'll have to consider when we vote. And we've given many waivers over the years of such things. Good, Miss. Good. You in the back. Okay. She was a four. Um, you can go next, Susan. Kelly Richards, 31 Shady Lane Drive. Um, would you mind defining a waiver and then defining a variance, please, according to our bylaws? Planning board doesn't give variances. The Board of Appeal gives variances. The planning board would give a waiver to a development just based upon what's considered a good layout and pretty much that's it. Okay. I do have a couple more questions um, just for clarification. Are the number of beds still the same? Yes. So 48? Yes. And the number of days staying, has that changed at all? I it's not a question for him. He's an engineer. He's not really okay. the operations. Um, is the what is the frontage on the building to the roadway? There's actually two lots, and they both have over 100 feet and 25 feet of frontage, and then we're combining the lots to build one building. Do you do you mean do you mean setback from the roadway the or setback from the roadway? Why'd you put up the other plan? And show the building. You can walk through the setbacks all around. <coughs> <coughs> In the back, you know, he said he increased the setback to 20 feet, right? With the wall and the and the yeah, fence, right? You went over that, right? We can't see that. We can't see that. Picture oh, okay. Just ask. We'll move it. So in the back, we're required to be 20 feet from the property line with the pavement. So that's what we met there. Yep. The building itself is set back 20 feet, which is the requirement. Uh, in the bylaw from um, the edge of the roadway layout line. Of the private way. Correct. How, f how, how wide is the pavement in the back? You got 20 feet and then what? Um, there's a 22 foot aisle and there's uh, 18 foot spaces. So 40 feet. So you got another 40, so it's 60 feet from the back line. Okay. Okay. And then um, with the fire truck traveling through the property, did that account for snow on the property and snow bankings as well? I know that there was like, it was going over sidewalks, I think you said, or a ramp. No, it just goes right up to the edge of the curb. But basically, if they, if they clear the entire roadway, the fire truck will get through. Okay. And that's a requirement. They need to clear the roadway when and where you know, will the they push the snow from the property when they clear? So there's snow storage areas we've shown here. We have a large area over here. There's different areas that they compile snow. Um, so we've shown where they compile. There's plenty of room to pile the snow. Okay, is that when you just pointed down towards the front, was that right on Middlesex Avenue? There's a space here. This is, So in know, between the gas station and right. the cul-de-sac? Right. And then, I don't know if you can answer this question, but what is this facility? What, do you, what are you calling it now? The plan says 48-bed re rehabilitation facility. I don't know that the um, Ken had a, a term that he used, and I can't recall what it was. <laughs> Look at what? Is it an MMID? Facility or is I, it you obviously know a little more than I do. It's like I said, I'm the All engineer, right. I know the it, I'm You're sorry, I can't. Yes. Oh, do you mind what is it being called now? 
we, we brought the operator in the facility in a prior, prior meeting, and he was grilled pretty heavily by the board and others. We have to, we can pull up the meeting minutes. This was all addressed at very length. And I didn't bring him here tonight because we thought that the subjects were going to be limited to more technical stuff. I can bring him back if necessary. Uh, I don't want to speak to that because it's a pretty technical um, technical question that's involved with regulation, and I don't want to misspeak. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up oh, for you. Okay. In, the, in the meantime, we'll keep moving on. Okay, that's unusual. But okay. What's unusual? Thank you. The the owner of the development not giving an answer about it. The reason I'm asking is not to be rude or perhaps because I missed one meeting. Um, I have spent most of the last year attending all of these town meetings. Well, to and, stay I'd on be top glad, of it and I'd be glad to, to give sure. you the meeting minutes. Can I just say one? one? That's fine. I'll let you speak. You've That's been speaking. Don't, don't act fine. like you haven't had a chance to speak. You'll speak. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, this has changed many times. And the reason why I'm asking is because from meeting to meeting, the name of the facility has changed many times. So I'm asking today to see if it, in fact, has changed again. That's all. But thank you for but researching. The name, the name of the facility is, again, the Planning Board Reviews Site Plan. I and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. OK. okay. We did have a discussion at two meetings on what the terminology should be, and I would say... I didn't mean to be curt, but the, the fact is that there's a technical change in the name of this meeting that's going on with the state of Massachusetts right now, and the terminology apparently is very sensitive on a number of fronts, both in terms of licensure and the way people who are affected by drugs are labeled. So I'm hesitant to go off on that limb at this time. Go ahead, Susan. Susan Sullivan, 60 Lawrence Street. Um, just to follow up a little bit on the on the snow um, storage, <coughs> um, can we make sure that that storage doesn't a actually end up ruining the landscape buffer for the neighborhoods in the back? Because that's pretty tight to be putting snow there. There's so much infrastructure here. I would imagine during some years it would be an awful lot of snow. And if it's going to be pushed up against the residential end in the corner there, I would imagine that it would um, impact some of the landscape plants, especially at the beginning of the growing period. So I'd be quite concerned about that. Um, the other thing I'm really concerned about is, is there going to be an agreement that will go into perpetuity regarding the maintenance of that cul-de-sac? I have really big concerns about how that's being crossed over. So that's technically part of Route 62. <coughs> And it's really not a private way. So I would like to know how you can take a piece of Route 62 and make it a private way. And if you're going to take a part of Route 62 and make it a private way, shouldn't you have some type of agreement in writing saying that they're responsible in case they sell that property or if they go out of business, which eventually they probably will, and then the next landowner gets that property, and do they have to also maintain that cul-de-sac? as a private way, even though it's part of Route 62? And will the town ultimately have to take care of it? It's not part of Route 62. But it's a cul-de-sac off of Route 62. So if it's a private it's a way, it has a private way. But it's a cul-de-sac off of Route 62. So technically, it's part of Route 62. They're using it to get frontage on Route 62. Mm -hmm. So technically, it's part of Route 62. If they're using it to get frontage. They get, they get frontage on their road that gives them access to that property. Right, so it's so. not technically a private way. Because if it was a private way, it would have to meet certain other conditions for a road. Right? No. no. That's why it's a private way. If it's a public way, it has to meet certain conditions to be a road. The only difference between a public and a private way is that a public way has been accepted by the town through the town meeting process. But so isn't it usually a road? Is that just a, a cul-de-sac off of Main Street? So it's not going to have a different a different address. It's still going to be Route 62. Or no, this would this roadway would have a name. name. Oh, it would be so a separate roadway. Oh, so it's not going to be 362 Middlesex. It's going to have a whole separate name. 
And that's actually something that the board should and the applicant should talk about the name of the roadway. So based on that, my question would be, does that private way meet private way regulation for a road? Yes. The width and everything? Yes. Yeah. I think on our plans, we just call it road A. Yeah, well, so, so right. it's kind of but a bad that's, <laughs> that's a placeholder for whatever is decided upon before final signature and recording of the plan. Usually the name has to go through the fire department, police department. They like to make sure that it's not already a road name in town or right. something close to a roadway and the name, uh, road name in town. You should give it some thought. Neil and Ron, how's that? <clears throat> Good. Joe Xavier, 40 Oakdale Road. Um, can you can you go to a floor plan? So on site, you're gonna have a septic system mm -hmm. and a commercial kitchen. So my first question is, why? And, and that's not yours, right? It's the architect side. But why isn't there a layout for the kitchen? And has that been taken into account for the size of the septic? the treatment of the septic the septic was sized for the facility and approved by the board of health and what was the other part of your question the is layout the of the building there, right? is a commercial kitchen of some sort in the yes. building i see an empty room right these are, preliminary, these are preliminary plans, I get your layout plans, so as they go through the permit process, that would be delineated for the permit applications. And this will be a closed facility, right? No visitors? Or I guess what would be for the extra load of people coming in? There's no, other than the workers, there's no other extra load that will go into the calculations of the septic. I don't believe the facility has visitors, um, but... Uh, We're gonna, we got a community room there, right? So right, there, there will be... But I mean, the, the, the system has been... contemplated as part of the board of... You know, when we went in front of the board of health. The, the, right. You know, commercial kitchen, the number of beds, the community room... It's regulated by the state what they needed to size it for so it's an equation based upon the facility yeah, that's what we the facility and the facility use yeah. good jeff fine 34 oakdale road you talked about the depth of the roadway and just a few trucks coming in but i could see <coughs> delivery trucks ambulances uh, garbage trucks coming around the side there's a lot of you i I don't know the amount of trucks that may be coming, but they do seem to be heavyweight trucks. Uh, they're not little vans that are delivering food. There's a lot of activity going on. Can you explain the fact that what size those trucks are and does that really uh, meet the, the, uh, the guidelines of the town to allow that so it doesn't impact the roadway? So roadway pavements are designed under AASHTO. Uh, it's a highway design guide. Um, truck trips. I've been involved in facilities where the truck trips are four or five hundred a day. Um, you know, a, a through roadway um, where logging trucks use the road, and you have to account for the fact that they're a hundred thousand pounds a piece. Um, a typical truck like you have here won't be any more than forty thousand pounds. A dual wheel um, delivery truck, um, a garbage truck might be sixty thousand pounds. They come in once a week. You know, a couple times a week uh, so the the truck loading is very very low and the pavements are designed to accommodate that and the pavements we've designed here are actually they could be less and still function properly and we had give them a 25 year design life so that's the, you know that's the, the justification for the waiver on the pavement depth and the board does need to evaluate, as the other member said, that if at some point this is not a whatever we want to call it, there may be a need for additional trucks down the road that should be considered. So it's not just what's happening now, but down the road. I still, based upon the zoning and, and what's allowed to be built here, you're not going to have a trucking facility. It's going to 
what we've designed will handle pretty much what that site can be used for. The other thing you need to know is when you design these facilities, the speed of the vehicles is contemplated in the thickness of the depth. So you can't get any speed on the site. Not only will we have low traffic with respect to truck traffic, nobody's going to be going more than 15 miles an hour through that site. So when you contemplate roadway designs, you don't contemplate these speeds. You contemplate speeds that are much higher. So that's another reason for the way. Good. Rob Fasula, 28 Marjorie Road. Just a question for you, Mr. Chairman. Can you cite the two law, uh, the two bylaws that there's a conflict with? Um, and is this the first time that the town has kind of been confronted with conflicting bylaws? And well, if it's not it the first is, time. or it's I mean, not the first time, is it's there not the first time we had a conflicting bylaw? No, things change. You, is there anything come being up? done to close that loophole, though, if you guys yeah. already know about always. it? So when was the meeting, first time always. Always have some happened? house cleaning on the zoning bylaws. We just did one beginning of the meeting. Before everything started, you've changed so when, was the, when was this identified, <coughs> this loophole that's allowed? Well, I wouldn't call it a loophole. It's not a loophole. It's a conflict. There's conflicting bylaws, so there's something It's wrong not a loophole. It's a conflict. It's not. But when was it identified? Um, in July. So it's our subdivision regulations, which were written in 1975, and they have not really been updated since. We actually have, um, we're working on a draft to update them because they just generally need to be updated um, because they're at a place where we actually want people to get waivers from this because it doesn't reflect today's standards, right? So it's old um, for starters. Um, the conflict was uh, actually came up because of this project. Um, we don't see industrial subdivisions happening anymore. Um, because, you know, industrial way was built out as an industrial subdivision, but typically we don't see new industrial subdivisions happening. Um, this is a case where in our design standards for the regulations, we require a certain pavement width, which is 32 feet and a right of way of 50. But then in the next section where it talks about construction, we talk, we separate, um, subdivisions other than residential subdivisions and in the construction section we say pavement has to be 48 feet um, I'm sorry 42 feet and 60 feet for a right-of-way so we have a design standard that says one thing and a construction standard that says another thing and um, it came up with this project because we don't see industry, we don't see non-residential subdivisions happening in town anymore. Um, but we are working on updating the regs. So if I could hold your feet to the fire, when can we, the residents, see a fix to this from the town? So the subdivision regula regulations don't go through town meeting. They go through the planning board with a public hearing process. Um, so I don't want to overpromise because it's taking a little longer because we're busy with things. Um, but we have a fairly decent draft um, with, uh, internally, but this board has not seen it yet. So um, I'm thinking, oh, I hate to overpromise, but um, sometime within the next six months, let's say, um, we would hold a public hearing to go over the revisions. Um, of this regulation <coughs> from 1975. And I'm sorry, I'm just going to say, I want to say one more thing. Thank you for that. Um, just any, I would expect you guys to hold them to the same standard that you would hold any other town resident to. So if. And what makes you think we would not? Why are you judging? I'm not accusing you of anything. I, I just want you well, guys. Well, it's kind to of an odd statement, so I want to know why you, you would make it. You 
think everything everybody accuses you. Um, I don't um, think that at I just all. Want everybody I want to know why you would fairly. make that statement. Please answer. I just want everybody to be treated fairly. And who hasn't been treated fairly in front of this board? Please, please why point them out to me. Conscience? Is that what you have? No, I don't. I want you to point them out to me. You're making a statement that I don't like. Please point out to me when anyone hasn't been treated properly. We 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 have at these and I and I'm standing to you Bible. that at these planning board meetings, we've had very open meetings and very big discussions. And if you'd like to look at those meeting notes from our August meeting, you'll know that we had quite a bit of a discussion. And Miss, if you'd like to come up, I'll give you my meeting minutes. I kind of circled what the man called. The unit, he called it a medically monitored withdrawal facility. According to the new state regs, I don't, I can't back that up. I have to go by what he said. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have anything to say? Okay, thank you. So we'll be uh, continuing this to next month because we got to square away the stormwater management portion. So the public hearing be continued to 8:15 on November 13th. Now we usually meet in the first Tuesday, but you know it's election month, so we'll be meeting on the 13th. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. What will happen with the board of appeals for that? Now it not happen on the 17th. Though? I would assume so, but I can't speak for that. You need to uh, get an extension to November 30th. So you'll have to Take a motion to continue <coughs> to November 13th at 8.15 and continue the public. Uh, extend the deadline to November 13th. So moved. Second. Third. Oh. Selectman. That should be on a Monday, That's no? A Monday, right? Ah, uh, that's right, because well, it stays on that Tuesday. Got too many holidays, I guess. Oh, because the 11th, the 11th is a Sunday. He's saying that the 13th is a board of selectmen meeting. I checked the calendar. I checked the before. Don't worry. No, it's fine. Right. The what, Veterans Day is, stays October. on Veterans Day, so it rolls to Monday, the 12th. Well, that's I can't work like this, Cheryl. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. <laughs> I love you. I, That's probably on TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta convince him to go. Oh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I, uh, I'm not gonna be here in the 13th. It's not gonna add it. Michael, I'm not gonna be here in the 13th. Sure, you are. That's okay. I'm in Nashville. That's, That's, special That's okay. It's not, it's a, not special a special permit. permit. So we're all right. You're assuming the rest of us will be. We only need three. <laughs> I never we don't have any other special I permits. Yeah. We don't have any right now. That's not right. Our deadline hasn't passed one this week. What? Well, then we'll warn them when I they haven't. submit. I just said our deadline hasn't passed for the next meeting yet. So if someone submits a special permit, we'll just tell them that we're going to be a member down, just so they know. Right. And then if they open, they have to have the same mm -hmm. thing. Yep. How are these guys? Are they going to be here ready? No? Hmm? Um, They're going to keep coming in after these other guys. They're going to be late all the time. Um, okay, we have an 8.30. Continue public hearing site plan review 18-09 and stormwater management permit 18-09-220 Main Street. <coughs>
You know, I don't like when I'm big. Yes. Try to make me say timelines. What you say? Me? Who? Me? What did you give me? Okay, who's up? Representing Noria Energy, who is the applicant. Um, we were here before you on August 7th. Uh, we're seeking, uh, we're here for site plan review. Uh, we're seeking to construct a car wash on the former Sonic building at 220 Main Street. Uh, when we were here before you last, the board had a number of questions comments and suggestions relative to the plan. Uh, we have submitted a revised plan. Uh, Rich Williams from Williams and Sparagis is here to review the aspects of the plan uh, and the revisions that we made. Uh, the things that you were concerned about were separation of the learning experience, uh, which is the building on the backs, entrance and access uh, as it related to this parcel. Uh, the board also indicated that they were uh, concerned about the uh, vehicles exiting the car wash and going directly out onto Route 38. And as Mr. Williams will detail, the plans have been changed to uh, have the vehicles come through the front and exit the back and then go around the parcel to come out to Route 38. Uh, in addition, there was concern about uh, a, an access through the adjoining parcel uh, that we don't have any legal right to. We've shown that as blocked on the plan. Um, Mr. Williams is here to go over the plans and review them for you. Um, the board also asked us to uh, engage a consultant to do a traffic analysis. And we have uh, Dan Mills from MDM who's here tonight uh, to answer any questions. He does have a report which will circulate to you folks uh, as well. And in the event that you wanted to hear from him tonight, uh, we also have Michael Snow, who's a sound engineer, uh, who would address the decibel level uh, relative to car washes pursuant to your bylaws. Um, if I could, I'd ask Mr. Williams to go forward and go through the plan changes. Sure. Um, I think before I start, I want to hand out, um, we got, uh, we got comments from uh, from the town engineer uh, through your board. He wasn't very happy with you. No. Well, I apologize for that. Um, I've tried to uh, answer uh, his questions. Uh, this letter is a response to that. Uh, also attached at the back of this is the traffic study. Um, so there are you eight copies here. Hang on to that for now. How about you walk through the plan, I'll sure. read his comments, and you kind of address each one. How's that? Okay. Um, but you have to do me one favor. Move that over a little bit so this I This guy see. here? No, move the plan over a little bit. My buddy over there is in the way, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So um, the, the big change to the plan was um, in the prior plan, Folks were coming in and driving through the building and exiting on the main street side of, of the of the structure. <coughs> the current plan uh, does does flips that building so that folks that are going into the drive-through will enter the site, uh, drive through um, around the north side of the building, uh, like we had before. There are two uh, two stations to uh, queue up and uh, folks leaving there will go uh, through the building and then exit through the parking lot onto, um, onto Main Street. The plan um, leaves a in and out from the learning experience um, separate from the car wash. So this, this drive out will only be used by uh, the learning experience uh, traffic with the exception that these these ten spaces here in the in the lease are are designated for uh, parking for employees to this building, so employees 
um, we'll use that aisle to park there and, and to leave. But aside from that, they'll all be all be TLE traffic. Um, so that's the that's the big change to the site plan. We've also provided um, uh, additional calculations for. Uh, uh, increased impervious area. We've, we've uh, added some green space to the side of the building um, and some islands uh, providing separation. These islands provide separation from uh, this operation to the, uh, the TLE building. Um, there were some puddling issues that um, uh, we were asked to address on the plan. Uh, we provided grading uh, showing that, uh, correcting that situation. Um, one change that you'll note um, in the revised package, uh, in order to freely get these vehicles into the building, we've eliminated these uh, four parking spaces. Uh, so those spaces will be um, just paved area will allow, uh, allow larger vehicles to make that turn without, uh, without uh, being involved in that uh, that parking area, and okay, I'm going to run through the uh, town engineer's comments quickly, and you can kind of address them, right? Mm -hmm. The stormwater management permit application does not include any documentation, narrative calcs, comps, pre and post development, <coughs> hydrological models, and watershed maps as is required to demonstrate compliance with Mass DEP stormwater policy. Therefore, a review of the SMP application cannot be conducted at this time, and we reserve comment until the documentation is received. The applicant's engineer is advised to review the Town of Wilmington's comprehensive stormwater management regulations prior to any submission. In this package are drainage calculations, watershed maps, narrative, all of the stuff that he asked for. Um, I will point out that um, that this site is uh, paved and um, the extent of our change is to add landscaping and the, the calculations that are shown on the plan and the calculations in that, uh, in that package that we provided to make show a reduction in runoff, um, which if you're changing impervious to, uh, to landscape that, uh, um, meets the Massachusetts stormwater policy. The stormwater ponding issue exists along the shared access drive with the existing daycare facility. The issue should be addressed accordingly. That's this area. We provided grading showing that, that we're going to regrade that area and get rid of the puddles. Some utility comments. The proponent is required to contact the town's water consultant, Kleinfelter, to complete a hydraulic analysis study at the proponent's expense. Same thing with the sewer. Only it's Arcadis. Have you done that? We haven't done that, but we are aware we need to do that. Okay. <clears throat> You'll need to do that before you come back again, right? So most probably this is going to be extended to next month. So I hope you can do that before that. The existing one-inch carpet domestic service off Main Street servicing the abandoned building should be illustrated on the plan. If the intent is to abandon the existing one-inch service, and use only the six inch service, the one inch service must be disconnected at the water main. A note should be added to the plan. So um, I was only made aware recently that, that we were asked, we had put a request in to leave both mains. Um, there was a letter submitted explaining why we thought it was a good idea. Um, but uh, since then, we've been notified that we need to, we can't do that, and we need to cut it at the main. Um, the, the site contractor has already uh, contacted the state to get the ball rolling on cutting that, that line and we will indicate it on the plan. Okay. The proposed MDC gas trap requires approval from the Mass Water Resource Authority. <coughs> yes, sir. Thank you. We're aware of that. That's a construction time um, permit. They come and inspect it. Uh, um, prior to installation or during installation. Traffic, the Department of Public Works recommends a traffic impact assessment be conducted for the proposed redevelopment. The following items should be addressed in the TIA. 
egress to Route 38 and impacts to the intersection of Richmond Street and Route 38. The layout has been revised to address the comment regarding circulation between the existing daycare parking lot and the car wash queue aisle. The layout has been revised to address the conflict between the vehicles exiting the car wash and the vehicles using the northerly access drive. We submitted a, a <coughs> traffic uh, a traffic study that uh, addresses those issues. Majority of vehicles exiting the daycare facility currently utilize 212 Main Street parking lot to exit onto Main Street. The TIA should address this condition and provide any shared access easement agreements with the 212 Main Street parcel. Also, the pavement surface has failed, leaving a significant pothole at the internal access point stride the shared property line. If cross access is permitted, improvements to the internal access point should be included in the scope of work for the new car wash. We have no right to use that. Um, and so the, the traffic study uh, reflects that. The existing cellular entry access drive to the daycare facility is to be limited to one-way traffic. The TIA should provide recommendation for traffic signage, markings, and aisle width. The proposed site layout plan should be revised accordingly. Uh, the plan that's before you in that package has updated pavement markings and stop signs and uh, uh, addresses that issue. Revised plans have adequately addressed the comment regarding tire tracked water, which may freeze on Route 38, Mass Dot jurisdiction during colder months. Revise that. New traffic comment based on the revised layout. The applicant's engineer shall address potential conflict to site entrance, vehicles exiting the daycare facility via the south access drive will conflict with vehicles entering the car wash area. The open pavement and lack of proposed traffic control both contribute to an undesirable condition um, we did add pavement markings after after the engineer looked at that but I, I think the um, traffic engineer should address that uh, um, if you guys are gonna hear from him you guys want to hear from him and while he's here we haven't seen that report but seeing the report it's kind of tough to ask questions Mr. Chairman, would you like him to just address the comments in the Sure. Report? I don't mind. Go ahead. Been here before? Uh, a couple times, sure. So you know town engineer? Mr. Lonnie? Yeah. Um, good evening, uh, Dan Mills from MDM Transportation Consultants. Uh, we were retained by the applicant to prepare a traffic study for the proposed development. Um, in general, um, the, the project expected to reduce traffic um, from the development, being a car wash and not a fast food restaurant. Uh, we reviewed um, ITE um, base information, Institute of Transportation Engineers uh, statistics for car washes, and we compared those to fast food restaurants. In general, they're uh, much much lower uh, compared to a, a, a fast food restaurant. Expect that you know if this was not to go forward, then possibly a, another restaurant could fill the site pretty easily. Um, so when you say they're much lower, they're much lower between the hours of seven and nine and four and six, so what? and on a Saturday, correct? Yep. yep. Um, uh, you know, the Sonic probably wasn't open during the morning, but uh, some type of morning type of breakfast or um, restaurant of that nature could come in here. Um, with regards to the impact of the off-site, um, we did uh, uh, redistribute the traffic from the Learning Center and we brought it down through the site. A uh, majority of folks do use the cross-connection today and they come to the, the traffic light. Um, so in understanding that restraint, um, we developed two lanes, um, one heading in to inbound towards the project and one heading out. And uh, there's some striping um, in between the two uh, drive aisles. And they're under a stop, we're proposing a stop condition for them um, at the um, as they intersect with the car wash um, again there's there's sort of a, um, a morning drop off and pick up uh, time period associated with the learning center um, <coughs> I think they would probably overlap a little bit during the evening peak hour but again the volume of the car washes um, is uh, fairly low compared to what the fast food restaurant could generate um, we did look at the queuing. Obviously, it's, a, it's obviously always an issue when you're dealing with drive-throughs, car washes, of fast food restaurants, pharmacies, banks, things of that nature. Um, they're providing approximately 20 uh, vehicles in store. 
up until this point here, uh, prior to the exit to the car wash, uh, which we feel is adequate. I believe the town requires 12 um, uh, stacking area for 12 vehicles. Um, we're providing about 20, and that only brings you back to here. So you're still well on site um, for any seasonal surge that may occur um, you know, other times of the year. Um, we compared um, the volume uh, for the car wash itself. We compared the two locations. One was here in town, uh, the, the Triton car wash, and one is a um, location that we had surveyed previously in Marlboro. Um, those um, compare fairly well with ITE um, statistics for uh, car wash. Again, they're lower than a, a fast food restaurant. Did I address the comments that were presented? Sure, good. Dan, a question for you. Um, in your traffic study, do you um, do you look at any of the turning movements within the site? Um, I'm specifically thinking of where cars are, are getting in line at the, I guess, the uh, rear of the previous Sonic building where they're kind of coming around that turn, and then the cars are exiting the car wash, um, sort of that, yeah, right in there. In here? Yeah, so that, that exit from the car wash and the right turn looks pretty tight when cars are coming into the line in the same spot. So if you could, I don't know if you looked at that at all with... with um, uh, we haven't done a specific turning analysis on there. I think it's 24 feet is the, uh, is the width to allow two-way two -way flow. Um, we could provide a... And is there some sort of median there that separates... Um, this isn't existing. I believe this was no, an existing part of the. That's the old Sona, um, Sonic. The old order board island. That's going to be. Will that stay? No, that's going to be gone. Okay. I think your thought process, if I'm. Yeah, it's kind of. Is if they're going to be, <coughs> if there's a line there and people are trying to exit. Yes. Yeah, just could be showing that it works. So drive a car in and then drive drive. You're saying drive a car in here and then and then see what it looks like with the car going like on. Yeah. yeah. It seems to get narrow right at that right at that spot, kind of. And then you can get backed up. Maybe yeah. Well, I guess it's, I, it's I guess narrow I, beyond. I guess there. I see it's, why. It's yeah. It's pretty it's, wide I here. I see that, but it's narrow here because it's only that's only one car needs to get through there. Um, but, but if you yeah, have a pickup easily, truck coming out of the car wash and making that right, it's gonna have to swing out into the. It looks like it might have to swing out. A bit into the. So is that landscape island? Yeah, there's a landscape island to the right of. Yeah, that getting yeah, narrow. There's, there's a landscape island here, and there's this L right here. It's not yeah, really. It's actually pretty wide there. I specifically well, left that wide. That's like thirty something feet. It's a tight turn. Which yeah. is thirty feet. This so here. Yeah, that's that's fine. What I'm that's looking at is right. Uh, Twenty nine feet. At, what I'm looking at is this guy right here who sees that narrow part right there. And says, "I'm going to drive straight at it instead of hugging the curb, like you probably should." It's got to, it, it. That narrow part right, that depends on somebody hugging that curb. And right, I, I, and and I get that, but I, and I think maybe Dan can answer that better. There's <coughs> the the statistical chance of having two people uh, come head on there is, you know, probably pretty low, and uh, they can both see each other. It's not like they're coming around. That's fair. Yeah, we'll regulate the site. That's fair. Yeah, we'll look at the site distance, you know, and they are regulated. They're not pumping out. I mean, they're, they, there's some gaps between the cars that come out. Right. So we can look at that closer. Yeah. So we have signage there saying entrance to the daycare facility, uh, directing them over to the daycare facility. They're, I know they have their own little lane there, right? And we have signage there, kind of. That's the only way you can get that, too. Right. Um, you know what I mean? I don't, so someone I don't think there's confused. a sign there now, but we could put a we could put a directional sign there. Sure. Car wash, keep left. Yeah. Learning God. experience. Just keep right. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the folks that are associated with the learning center, they're going to be they'll regular, they'll regular they'll folks that are coming and going to and from. Yeah, the but the grandma site. might no, yeah, no, be yeah, mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt. They're confused. Boy, got anything else? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, do you have any interest in hearing anything relative to the uh, the decibel level regulation? Sure. So, I'm gonna go. 
Hi, Mr. Chair. My name is Mike Snow. I am an engineer for MTI in Portland, Maine. Our company specializes in solutions for the vehicle wash industry. We have a relationship with Neuer Energy today, um, working with them in energy conservation and water recovery. By virtue of that relationship, they've learned of some of our successes in engineering and implementing um, mitigation to sound created by car washes as it impacts ordinances, whether they're nuisance ordinances or DB ordinances within the town. And they contacted us regarding this property management did and said, can you provide us a solution? We need to meet an ordinance of 55 dB at the property line. Um, in order for us to create that solution, we needed to analyze a real live like facility. So we searched through their database of washes to find a site that would include the same equipment proposed to be used at this site. And of those sites, we tried to choose a worst case scenario to analyze. Um, and that was Old Orchard Beach, Maine. Uh, it was a worst case scenario because of the impervious surface. It's a lot of paved, it's a lot of flat. Um, and came up with a sound mapping uh, for a noise that emanated from the loudest piece of the car wash, which is typically the exit side where the blowers are. We then needed to understand what existed here today as the property. Because if, once we implement a solution, we also have to be able to prove that it works. And we want to do that on paper first. Um, in this particular case, we mapped the sound at Old Orchard Beach, and we laid those results on top of this facility here and found that in the, on the north side, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, on the east side and on the south side, we were able to achieve, without making any equipment modifications, the 55 dB required at the property line. The um, north side uh, wound up, we'd have to implement 15% uh, sound mitigating fence in order to achieve that 55 dB at the property line. We, I have those maps available and can show you them. Um, when we answered Noria's request as to whether we could do it or not, the answer was yes. Um, they asked if we could implement any other measures at this facility which would include a sound trap inside of the facility and a variable frequency drive which allows us to spool down the blower <coughs> and change both the pitch and the sound pressure generated by those devices. Um, management wanted to make sure that we had alternate mitigating <coughs> Uh, circumstances available um, in the event that there were any issues. Uh, those those reports are done. Um, it was successful, and again, I can I can bring those out if, if you'd like to see them. Do you have any questions? I'm sorry, I'm not real great at speaking in public, and so I'm operating a little clumsily. But I'd be glad to entertain any questions that you might have. Good. What is it, 15% sound mitigating fence? Where is it? No, what is it? What? Um, it's a fancy word for a fence. Oh, um, right. they, these are fences that you may see a double stockaded fence. And, and that's on that's on the north side on this plan then? Yeah, okay. it is. It's right. right here on the property line. And what we needed to do is create a 15% reduction in sound. Okay. Um, and sound kind of like water, throwing a rock into the lake and putting up something that kind of makes the waves ch at least change direction. Sure. Um, something very similar would occur there. 
you have a it's a quiet site. It's a neat natural site by the vegetation and the landscaping that's been done and the natural berms that are there between this property and the McDonald's property do help mitigate sound. Um, the challenge for us is that everything's louder than 55 dB. So when it came time to say, did what you, when you, what you did and what you put into place, did it work? Um, to do that type of study, we'd have to kind of turn things on in the middle of the night in order to show that it, it worked. Did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> you guys got anything else? No, that was good. Good? Good? Anybody in the audience? Just got one question. Go ahead. Traffic study. The Triton Car Wash. When was it done? You compared Triton Car Wash? Smooth check. Okay. Uh, the, so we conducted the traffic count uh, August uh, 16th and 18th. It was, I believe, a Thursday and a Saturday. So you conducted a traffic study on the slowest month of the year, which is August, September, October. How about a traffic study in December or January, February, March? where all the volume comes. Summertime is the slowest time of year for a car wash. Everyone goes on vacation, they travel, cars <coughs> are dirty. That was it. That's a good point, but I guess, it's, gonna, uh, unfortunately, it's, this is when he's in. Yeah. And he the cars are gonna come up one at a time. They're not, there's not a huge space between cars. The tunnel itself is built for over 120 cars an hour with two pay stations. They don't build a facility with two pay stations at a hundred and over a hundred foot tunnel to build a hundred twenty foot car wash to run less than sixty cars an hour. They're gonna be running over a hundred cars an hour. Even at sixty cars an hour, that's sixty cars a minute. Mr. Chairman, we were asked to do a traffic analysis and we complied with the board's request. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to have to continue this the next month because most of what you did we didn't see and the engineer hasn't seen. So in the meantime, you'll talk to him about stormwater and square everything up and you'll square up the water and sewer. As it relates to the plans, Mr. Chairman, other than the issues that came up tonight, is there anything else that the board wants well, to the see? The board doesn't have anything like right this moment, but, you know, sure plans. we haven't really looked at the revised plans and we, we kind of depend upon the town engineer, so. <coughs> so you should submit to him and talk to him. Okay, yeah, I, I'll plan on sitting down with him and make sure we get uh, our stuff buttoned up. You're gonna need an extension to the end of the next month, so if you just sign that. What's the date of your November meeting, Mr. Chairman? 13th. I, I didn't make that up. Right? How much time do you want to give that? Half an hour, I guess. Because you've been nice enough to come in after the one that takes so long, I'm going to try to squeeze you in, in the beginning. So I'm counting on you very much that you will make sure you answer all those questions, right? Thank you. Back and forth with the town engineer. So we're going to put you on at 7:30. First thing. Appreciate it. Everybody be on time. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have a continue the public hearing to November 13th at 7.30 and the uh, action deadline to November 30th, 2018. So moved. Second. All in favor.
Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So, what was this for the information purposes only? Yes. drop-in workshop we had tonight. Oh. Oh, handout. I forgot about that. Sorry. Um, this is the tiny little survey we gave. I don't. So we're using, um, hopefully we have some information. We haven't looked through it yet because we had it tonight. Um, we'll look through it, see if we got any feedback and um, would like to um, Get your opinion on scheduling some time to talk about something like this. Um, would you like us to do another? Um, would you like to do another workshop with the, us to do a workshop with the public for the draft proposal, or should we bring it to you first? Um, any thoughts on that? Sorry, stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tonight we had a workshop on inclusionary zoning um, to introduce the topic, introduce the concepts and components that go into the bylaw. So we're going to have to do a good definition of what inclusionary zoning is as opposed to overlay district and that kind of stuff? Right, so that was the idea of tonight is to provide information on what it is. Um, and did you have people show up? We did. We did. We had a, a decent turnout and we had some good... Uh, Comments and discussion. No. Um, Did they ask us to? Some of them were there. We had a good turnout. Um, <laughs> and now we're going to hopefully have some information we can use for our draft. We have a draft set up. Um, I guess the question is you guys will be the board to kind of sponsor this type of article mm -hmm. should we go back and have a workshop with the public separately or should we bring it to a planning board meeting to discuss both <laughs> okay sure we're actually going to take this workshop on the road to the senior center in the library this month too to get some more feedback Solid. yeah it was actually really really good do you want yes. us to fill out your survey if you want to yeah certainly i will be happy to okay great thank you are these numbers accurate Yes, I hope so. What kind of a question is that? No, I mean, no, but the that's a ridiculous of question. The median. <laughs> yes, the numbers. What if she said no? The numbers are accurate. That's why. Um, so let me know if you have questions about this, and um, doing our best to come up with something that's that's at least. Uh, well, we, um, I mean, we. We talked a little bit about this around the time of the um, town meeting, mm -hmm. and we were gonna we kind of. I was kind of curious about other towns and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, have, has anybody looked at that at all? We have definitely. Yeah. Um, we have. Um, so we're kind of pulling pieces from things we like from each town. Yeah. And we have. We've kind of saw a range of. You know, on one of these, it actually. Um, like for the develop, like where the de the requirement kicks in, what number of units? Yeah. There's a range. Um, some towns start at four units, some start at six, um, eight, and up. So there's a, a full range of, of of examples. The percentage ranges from 10% to 25%. There's a real range there. Um, a lot of them are more like 12 or 15. We saw a lot of 15s. A lot of 15s. A lot of 15s because then if you're giving a density bonus, your effective percentage goes down, yeah, you can, right? You so can that, you're yeah. saying 15%, but you're giving them some market rate bonus units, so you go down to a 13 or a 12% really. Or right. even 11 in some cases. Right. Um, so a lot of that is on here, and this was um, the goal for this was to um, give people enough 
information so that they can be dangerous in a discussion about the draft bylaw. Where is the draft bylaw? Where is it? It's, it's all up here. Yeah. No. <laughs> We um, it's in their office. we have it in in a kind of a rough draft shape um, that we were hoping to get some information to fill in some of the the numbers at this point. We have a feeling on what we think is right because we have our 2004 housing plan to look at, which it's dated, but it's it's not that dated. Um, so we're using that. We're using examples from other towns to um, to put something in there that we can. That we think has the best chance of, of being sort of a middle ground. <coughs> We're thinking maybe a threshold of eight units, um, you know, a percentage of 15, you know, sort of. We're sort of trying to use that 2004 plan, really, it mirrors that pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would be interested in reading that. Like, email not you know not in the packet kind of thing like just a little bit more time I think maybe when it comes up to a meeting is a hundred and seven thousand dollars that's for a household of four right doubling okay yep I was gonna say holy cow yep so we tried to provide as much information as possible without overwhelming people so we'll see is the term affordable really means that the, they can pay their rent or mortgage with a maximum rent of 30% of their income? Yes. Sometimes it's less than 30%, but often it's not. <laughs> well, this is your area of what you're working on now, right? Pretty much. <laughs> so we'll respect your opinion to the board. A little bit. I can help a little bit. I pretty much do construction to maintain affordable housing. <laughs> I don't really build affordable housing. All right, so if we get comfortable with a place where we have a draft for November, should we put it on the agenda? Yeah. Well, right? November? No. Yeah. No. No. No? Well, he's, he's not going to be here either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, December? Yeah. yeah. December. Well, we'll, we'll keep you posted. We'll mm -hmm. skip November because Dave's going to be... Yeah, I'm absent. Busy. December, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be in a public hearing setting? So what's going on? No, well, this it's, it's a discussion. Public. Send it to me when it's ready. So what's I'll, going on with you right now it. between now and town next town meeting? Are you this? No, in overall. Signs. You got a lot of things going on. No signs have to wait a year. Um, no, they don't. This. Got what's wrong? This inclusionary bylaw. Oh, Trying to update the zoning and we have some small fixes. Really, the focus is on this addition um, and working on the subdivision regs, which doesn't go to town meeting. But it, it's sort of we're getting to a point where we're looking good with that draft. Um, we have not picked up signs um, because the focus again has been on this, uh, which was sort of a, a directive from different aspects of town government including the selectmen so okay um so then that should be a priority and push then. Mm -hmm. i mean obviously it'll pick up once the articles get written and stuff the zoning stuff but i think when we go back to the sign one we'll make it not a whole whole scale we've written the whole article but a couple pieces of it because some stuff we didn't really change. I know. I kind of wish clear. I didn't answer the question tonight too good about the variance in the waiver. I mean, things in the zoning bylaws. The bylaw is adaptable this course of time. You know, I was thinking about it. You know, like I was talking. You know, if you take like in my area, like when I walk the dog, if I go down Ring Street, you know, it's that meets the original zoning bylaw with a street. I mean, streets like. 20 feet wide than the sidewalks. I mean, it's humongous. Now, no one comes before us and wants a street that wide, right? Everybody wants to reduce drainage and mm -hmm. global warming and that stuff. So now, you know, everybody wants to hold anywhere between 24 and 28 feet for the width of a street, right? I mean, that's, so those are how perfect. things evolve over the course of time, and that's why you would grant a waiver. And that's kind of mm -hmm. stuff we probably didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. Sidewalks are always a big waiver, right? 
carving is always a big waiver item. Right? But we do grant waivers. We can't just say that, you know, this is something unique. He's not asking for anything unique. The fact that there's a conflict within the zoning bylaws, I mean, that's, that's interesting. But once the design rigs and the other was what rigs? So it's sure. within the subdivision regs, it's the design section versus the construction so section. So the design reg should roll, because mm -hmm. that's... What's you would think so. That would roll. Well, and that's what he's holding to? Yeah. And he's holding to the design reg, so that should roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the construction one is the one that goes bigger, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I don't know why he doesn't at least give us the pavement. Well, I, I think... Mean, that's not a big... That's yeah, not a big I don't cost think the facility. <laughs> I was disappointed in that section he had. It's not a really nice looking building. Um, you know, the pavement is a, is a not a big number for this. You know, I it's not a big cost item, so it's not like you get granted a minute special. Well, we can discuss that at the next, next meeting. You guys can discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. Oh, we know how you Great. feel about that. <laughs> Well, the section law that he was proposing was only four inches of pavement. It should be six. It was four, yeah. That should, that should be six. Yeah. Can yeah. everyone be kicked now? You should tell them. We'll discuss it at the next meeting. Yeah. All right, anything else? No. Nope. Move to adjourn. So. <laughs> Then I'm leaving with that, guys. <laughs> 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 <laughs>